Please be seated. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hand. When you were a very young child, who was the oldest person you can remember holding you in their hands? Whose hug and touch do you remember communicating deep love and connection? For me, when I was a young child, I was taken to Korea to meet some relatives, including elders who were born near the beginning of the 20th century. So have that person in mind. Now I want you to think about the youngest person you know right now. And for our baptismal families, maybe it's the baby you're holding. For me, it's my 15th month uh, old daughter. And so let us imagine this child, this youngest person that you know right now as a grandparent or a great grandparent. Now for the babies and toddlers, when they reach that age, they will already be living in the 22nd century. Elise Boulding was an American Quaker sociologist who created this thought experiment. She called it the 200-year present. Those elders who held us when we were very young, all the way to the date, when the youngest whom we hold now are at the end of their lives. That is a span of 200 years. It is a way of describing how the past, present, and future are connected in a real and concrete way by those who have touched and formed and loved us. It is a way of describing that we are not alone. It is a way of saying that we are all part of something much bigger. In our reading from Revelation today, the author whom the church calls John the Divine gives us one vision for the saints of God. We hear about this great crowd of people all robed in white, standing before the Lamb as they worship. And they are described as people who have been through a great ordeal. Now this great ordeal likely refers to the anti-Christian persecution that occurred under the Emperor Domitian at the end of the first century. And so we can understand these robed people in white as people who died for their faith. We call them saints. And so when the church celebrates All Saints Day, we are lifting up heroes of the faith, all kinds of heroes, especially those who died for their faith, like these martyrs under Domitian. They provide for us a model for what it means to be a Christian in the world, to risk public ridicule, arrest, or even death as we witness to the gospel. Now, I don't know about you, but this image of the church as a collection of heroic saints is pretty intimidating. And I'll admit it, I don't think I could ever uh, die for my faith. I think I would be too scared. And maybe the same is true for you. But there's another way of understanding the church and who its people are. Earlier in Revelation 7, John writes about a different group of people. They are not robed in white or washed in the blood of the Lamb. Instead, John says, this group has been sealed by God. And so in the ancient world now, a seal was a way to signify ownership and authenticity and protection. So if a king marked a decree with the king's seal, it meant, yes, this has my full authority. It's mine. And so in the same way, when John writes about this group that has been sealed by God, he means that God has taken ownership of them. He said, God has said, these people are mine under my protection. And starting in the early church all the way up to today, 
we have understood baptism as the process by which God seals a person and takes possession of that person and puts that person under God's protection. I want you at the baptism to watch and listen closely. After the dean baptizes each child with water, the dean will then take his hands and mark each child with holy oil and say, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Forever. That means without any conditions. The dean will not say, you are marked as Christ's own as long as you live a good and virtuous life. Or if you are willing to be a martyr on behalf of Jesus, or if you promise to go to church every Sunday and say your prayers every night. No, the promises that God makes in baptism in this ceiling are unconditional because the bond by which God establishes in baptism is indissoluble. Nothing can break it. So here is another way to think about the communion of saints on this All Saints Day celebration. Saints are those of us, all of us, who have been baptized and thus deeply connected to one another. Because in baptism, the Holy Spirit has sealed us, touched us, and made us God's own. And so in baptism, we don't have a 200-year present. No, the span for the communion of saints is much, much wider. It starts all the way with everyone who has ever come before us, all the way until those who have yet to be born, until the end of the ages, past, present, and future, connected by the Holy Spirit in a real and concrete way, assuring us that we are not alone, that we are part of something much bigger.